the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I've decided to wear this particular chasuble on the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity because 25 years ago, this was the first Mass that I celebrated as a Catholic priest. I was ordained on June 1st, 1996, and I lamented the fact that my mother couldn't be with me uh, for this special occasion, and that those who had served me and supported me during my formational days uh, had gone past, had gone to heaven, I hope, and uh, hopefully I have done them well as a Catholic priest. I decided to honor the family who uh, presented me with this chasuble and the chalice I'm going to use for this Mass. And I certainly want to thank all of you for being supportive of me, both here at the Border Town Parish and over the last 25 years, as we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries on Trinity Sunday. Let us open our hearts to God's presence as we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us all of our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending in the world the word of truth, and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other, did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have a long life on the land which the Lord, your God, 
has given you forever. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Upright is the word of the Lord, and his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right of the kindness of the Lord. Our earth is full. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made by the breath of his mouth, all their host. For he spoke, and it was made. He commanded, and it stood forth. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield, May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God and are sons of God, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption, through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. While they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us kneel. homily is somewhat poignant to me because this is the first time I preached a homily as a Catholic priest on June 2nd, 1996, the day before I was ordained a priest in the Diocese of Joliet in a class of three of the three individuals that was ordained. I am the lone survivor, certainly not the best of the three, certainly not the most intelligent, but I have persevered despite a lot of the hardships, if you want to hear about some of those hardships go back to the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time last year where I listed the struggles that I've had during my ministry. When I was ordained, I actually received letters from students at St. Isidore's Church in Bloomingdale, Illinois, who uh, wrote these letters to me of support in preparation for what I was about to do. The letters read, Dear Deacon Pete, I am happy for you on becoming a priest. Congratulations and good job. I am sure that you are glad to get out of school. I am also graduating from the 8th grade, and I feel the same way. P. Randy Thomas. 
Dear Deacon Pete, our 8th grade class would like to congratulate you on your ordination from a deacon to a priest who will be able to reform the masses on his own. I will always pray for your safety, Jim Morrissey. Jim, I still need your prayers. Dear Deacon Pete, I am writing this letter to congratulate you on your ordination. I thank you for all you have done for this parish. You have done many things for us, like helping us during the Mass when we had no idea what we were supposed to be doing. Eric Worley. Eric, I still don't know what I'm doing at this Mass, and now that the Sisters of the Annunciation Monastery have been teaching me the Latin Mass, I feel more clueless now than sometimes I did then. About ten years after that, uh, I was at St. Joan of Arc Church in Lyle, and I received another letter that said, Dear Father Pete, I wish you weren't leaving because you were a fun and nice priest. I hope one day you will become Pope. Your name could be Pope Pete V because you were the fifth priest who came and left that was here while I still remember from Katie Illich. I have no idea what that means, but you know I was just celebrating the Mass for Pope Celestine V. Pope Celestine was the last Pope that resigned voluntarily before Pope Benedict XVI did a few years ago. I also remember he was such a holy and upright man, and yet his successor, Pope Boniface VIII, out of fear decided to lock him in a tower for the rest of his life, which would be considered a punishment for most. But for Celestine V, who wanted to just live a simple life in prayer, he considered it a blessing, and he spent his time with the only individual that really mattered in his life, our Lord and God. I feel sometimes like uh, Celestine V in some ways. When I was ordained a priest, I was placed in a location that was not to my liking, but I was uh, able to persevere after a year of struggling. I ended up getting assigned to St. Paul's Church in Joliet, Illinois. And for the four years I was there and the friendships I had made, there are a good number of folks from that parish with whom I have still had communications Ray Kaufman, the musician, Ellen Fisher, the secretary, Mary Maloney, and all kinds of other folks from the parish who have been writing me and supporting me, and for them, I am most grateful. I also would like to mention Don and Sue Cordano. Don and Sue used to be breakfast partners of mine during my time at St. Paul's, and throughout the following 20 years, many people joined us at the breakfast table. A good number of them helped me finance the projects that I was able to accomplish with the parishioners and the people of Joliet during my 12 years at St. Patrick's Church, and Don and Sue were instrumental in these projects, and without them, without you, none of these things could be possible. Always through the glory of God, I give blessings for the people in my life that have helped build these local parish communities. I think about my next assignment at Our Lady of Mercy Church in Aurora, Illinois, on Eola Road, which stood for End of the Line Aurora. Uh, there are a good number of people, including Heather Demansky, who was there, who uh, very much supported me in what I was doing and knew that I was struggling because I dedicated my life for the protection of the most innocent, for the protection of children, to defend their rights. And that is not easy in today's society, especially in a world that sometimes takes advantage of children and hurts them where we're supposed to be defending them and protecting them. For the short time I was at St. Joseph's Church in Addison, Illinois, uh, I very much am appreciative of the folks over there. Very poor parish, very uh, needy parish that needed help of others, and they're still struggling uh, to this day. But I keep reminding myself that no matter how badly we struggle, it pales in comparison to the struggles that Christ had on the cross. My next assignment was at St. Joan of Arc in Lyle, Illinois, and there were a good number of folks. The Weinberg family has been extremely kind to me. Uh, Kathy was the secretary at the time, and we still have good communications, her and her husband, Jim. Lots of folks from uh, Joan of Arc who uh, have kept with me during my priesthood, supporting me during good times and in bad. In 2005, in the midst of all of this, I was asked to cover for three months here at the border town to help out at St. Patrick's and Moments and Sacred Heart and Hopkins Park. During my youth ministry days, I helped out at St. Anne's and in Gilman and all kinds of places in the southern end of the diocese. I actually took a few weeks to travel through this part of the uh, counties 
of Ford and uh, Iroquois and Kankakee and Grundy to get to know the folks down here. I had helped in Spanish masses in all kinds of different places in all seven counties of the Joliet Diocese because there was such a need. The priests over at St. Mary's in Plano, Illinois, the Marians of the Immaculate Conception, Boniface Visnoris, Jerry Zalonis, um, Tony Nakunis, uh, have been very kind to me uh, during my ministry and uh, the folks over at Immaculate Conception Church in Morris, Illinois. You know, in Morris and in uh, Plano, for a good 10 years of my life, I was helping with Spanish Masses because folks couldn't find a Spanish-speaking priest. I remember with the poor clares of the Annunciation Monastery that uh, I started with them when they lived in the guest house in which I now live because they were confined there in their life of cloister before their convent was built around 1995-96. I ended up going in 1996 to St. Pat Patrick's Church in Joliet, Illinois for 12 years as their pastor, the oldest parish in the Joliet Diocese. During that time I was helping out all kinds of places in the city, Our Lady of Mount Carmel and St. John the Baptist and especially St. Joseph's Church in Joliet, Father Tim Andres who has been a great uh, spiritual support for me during my time to uh, guide me along and help me. And when he was having his back struggles and uh, he couldn't find help, I certainly uh, was blessed to help him out. I just remember one Christmas I had to celebrate four Christmas Eve Masses, two at my parish and two at his parish, because he couldn't find any help. And I was very blessed that Father Tim uh, was so supportive of me on my ministry. During my fourth sabbatical in 2018-2019, very grateful that the poor Clares let me stay at their uh, convent guest house while I celebrated Masses for them and continued to teach at the University of St. Francis, which I have done for the last 12 years, and trying to help out the students there. There's so many people that are in need, so many people that have sought out God's love and there are so many lives that God has been able to touch through me. And I'm blessed. You know, I say that uh, a lot of parts of my ministry uh, I do not uh, enjoy doing. Certainly not the administration portion, but the ministry portion. Celebrating the masses, helping lives, guiding lives, hearing confessions, 24-hour confessions at St. Pat's a couple, three times a year. Um, very blessed that all of you have been part of my life. Just want to thank you for supporting me and guiding me and helping me. You know, there are some people in life that take different paths than I do. Some people who climb the ladder, some people who wine and dine. All I've ever wanted to do was save souls, starting with my own. And in times, I have done this miserably. And at times, God has allowed me to do well. It's all because of you. It's all for you. It's because of you that I'm still here. And the sacrifice that needs to be made, I have to keep reminding myself that I have to suffer and I have to sacrifice because you are worth it. And I know that that road is fraught with danger. It's no more dangerous than what the apostles had to walk. They had to give up their lives, literally, for the sake of the kingdom. Our Lord had to suffer and die on the cross for the sake of the kingdom. I have not been as strong as I could be. I need to be better. I need to serve you better. I need to be stronger in what God is asking me to do. Uh, I ended up, during my fourth sabbatical, writing my memoirs. 28 chapters, 570 pages. Those who have read the book uh, had know what I've had to endure. One day that might have to come out, but uh, for now, I just do the best I can to help you out. And I try to just every day wake up and ask God, Thy will be done. And I pray and hope that I do well for you. I'd like to end my homily by offering some words from St. Pope John Paul II concerning this particular feast day. I hold them close to my heart, and I hope that you can continue to pray for me as I do God's work wherever God sends me to serve. The good Holy Father writes, Blessed are you, Father, who in your infinite love gave us your only begotten Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in a spotless womb of the Virgin Mary and was born in Bethlehem. He became our companion on life's path and gave us new meaning to our history. The journey we make together in toil and suffering, in faithfulness and love, 
towards the new heaven and the new earth where you, once death has been vanquished, will be all in all. Praise and glory to you, most holy trinity. You alone are God most high. You alone, always for the glory of God. This is our prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that we are rightful heirs to the heavenly reign, we place our petitions in God's hands. That all who are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit proclaim the good news with their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving to all those who have supported me and my ministry and those who have sacrificed their lives for the sake of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. In great thanksgiving to the border town parishes, which are truly a gift to me and my life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are priests, those who have made this sacrifice, who have answered this call, and have given their lives to others for the sake of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, especially those most in need of God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those whose intentions were offered this last week, that they and their families may be blessed by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, continue to hear our prayers and be with us always. Fill us with your love as we journey through life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, and to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. Not a unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, with St. Anne, St. Patrick, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Ronald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever 
the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we profess your eternal trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. So on Memorial Day, May 31st, I will be over at St. Anne's Cemetery at 8 o'clock a.m., for a special Mass in honor of our veterans who are buried at that cemetery over at St. Patrick's. We will do the same at 9.30 a.m. Very much want to thank Miguel Aguirre and his group of merry men and women who came to our border town communities to cut down and uh, grind out the stumps of 40 trees on our property as well as cleaning up and putting soil and seed around our concrete walkways leading up to our pavilion. We want to beautify the property and get it ready for summer services, summer masses. On June 6th, on a Sunday morning, we are going to combine our 10.30 and 12 o'clock masses. I guess the folks at Moments want to offer a special mass for me in honor of my 25th anniversary. If it's well outside, if the weather is accommodating, we will celebrate the Mass outside, so please make sure you bring chairs and social distance and all that good stuff. The Knights, the Knights of Columbus are going to provide a social. Maria Jankowski is going to provide a social. 
folks in our Hispanic community are going to provide a social. We're going to have food indoor and out. Uh, it's just a way of honoring the priesthood. As I've told you, this is not about me. It can't be about me. It has to be about the priesthood, about somebody coming forward and saying yes to God. We very much thank Father Dan Hessling, who made that call some years ago, who was raised at St. Patrick's in Mimens, was uh, through the RCI process at the church, who was ordained for the Diocese of Joliet and served this community. Uh, at this point, it is me doing this, and I think the folks in the area want to uh, have something special for me. Please know that all of you are invited. At the very least, please pray for me. As I've stated, it's not been an easy 25 years, and hopefully I can serve a little bit longer protecting those children and those people in the community who are most in need of God's mercy. Very much want to thank all of you for your support and prayers on my behalf and on behalf of the folks who serve this community. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God. Looking forward to Memorial Day, which is a, uh, a civil holiday, but also it has very definite religious overtones. I remember as a child it was called Decoration Day because, of course, it was an invitation for people to go to the cemeteries and uh, restore Civil War monuments, but then, of course, later as as the time went on, it became a, a day to remember those who have died in the service of our country. As Catholics, obviously, we look at death as, as a threshold, as a passage to uh, eternal life. But we also look at the dead as people who should be remembered in, in our prayers. Uh, we pray for their everlasting life. We pray for their eternal repose. We should never forget that we are really the heirs 
of their sacrifices. And Memorial Day is a time to, to remember that those sacrifices and to remember the price that what we enjoy is very high because it is measured in that inestimable and incalculable gift of shedding one's blood for one's country. It's important to remember that the men and women who wear the uniforms of the five branches of the military services of this country do not make the policy decisions. They did not choose to go to Afghanistan or Iraq. They chose, obviously, to serve their country. But then it is the civil society in a democracy such as the United States that makes those decisions. And so regardless of what we feel about the wisdom or not of engaging in a war, we still must be grateful to the men and women who accepted the responsibility and who went off and fought in those wars and now who come back and try to reintegrate themselves into our society. And so that is certainly something we bring to our prayers. It's certainly something that perhaps we should reach out to a veteran, that we should do that as well, um, to remember to say thank you for, for serving your country, for serving our country, and uh, for being a part of uh, an organization that exists basically to defend those values that we, that we hold very, very dear. This weekend, uh, we do want to remember our soldiers who have died on Memorial Day weekend and those who have given their life for this country so that we can be afforded this freedom that we now enjoy. Let us give thanks to God for his presence in our life, for both our faith, our life, and our country. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father who raised Jesus from the dead be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, we gather today to pray for our brothers and sisters whose bodies lie here in rest. They have passed from death to life in company with the Lord Jesus, who died and rose to new life, are purified now of their faults. We pray that God may welcome them among all the saints in heaven. Let us pray. O judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties that we in this land now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all people share in the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. With through Christ our Lord, amen. Brothers and sisters, listen to the words of the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, 
will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you have been keeping up with me throughout these online services, you know that I have been reinforcing the fact that every life is essential, that God is more essential than any other institution, anything else we have. And in that, this cemetery, we have so many individuals with so many different stories that are sacred, that are important, and that if we learn these stories, if we learn about these people, we learn that as body of Christ, every single life has meaning. Today we remember those who have sacrificed their lives for our protection, for the freedoms that we enjoy, that we learn about their stories, that we'll learn about these individuals. Perhaps today we can stop and say a prayer for those who have been forgotten, for those who have given their lives so that we can live because we learned in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians that we do not know when our time will be our last. If we prepare each day as if it is our last, if we sacrifice with every ounce of our breath and every strength in our life for the sake of the other, to remind ourselves that we should follow their example, whatever our vocation we are afforded, that we always shall do it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is our prayer. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for them. Saint Michael, pray for them. Saint John the Baptist, pray for them. Saints Peter and Saint Paul, pray for them. Saint Andrew, pray for them. Saint Stephen, pray for them. Saint Joachim and Saint Anne, pray for them. Saint Patrick, pray for them. Saint Teresa, pray for them. Saint Catherine, pray for them. Saint Francis Cabrini, pray for them. Saint Elizabeth and Seton, pray for them. All holy men and women, pray for them. Christ, pardon us their faults. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, remember the good they have done. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, receive them into eternal life. Pray for them. 
Christ, comfort all those who mourn. Pray for them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for your natural majesty and beauty of this land. They restore us, though we often we destroy them. Heal us. We thank you for the great resources of this nation. They make us rich, though we often exploit them. Forgive us. We thank you for the men and women who have made this country strong. They are models for us, though we often fall short of them. Inspire us. We thank you for the torch of liberty which has been lit through this land. It has drawn people from every nation, though we often hidden from its light. Enlighten us. We thank you for the faith that we have inherited in all its rich variety. It sustains our life, though we have been faithless again and again. Renew us. Help us, O oh Lord, to finish the good work here begun. Strengthen our efforts to blot out ignorance and prejudice and to abolish poverty and crime and hasten the day when all our people with many voices and one united chorus will glorify your holy name. Amen. And with Christ there is mercy and fullness of redemption. So let us now pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God of hosts, whose power and authority is from everlasting to everlasting, keep under your protecting care the armed forces of the United States of America and all who serve therein. Grant that they may be a sure defense and a safeguard for the people of the United States, providing security for all who come and go in peaceful and lawful pursuits. Support them wherever duty takes them, on land or sea or in the air, and grant that they may fulfill their high calling as defenders of justice and freedom. In times of peace, keep them from evil. In times of danger, grant them fortitude. In times of conflict, give them the gift of your presence. May our men and women in the armed forces stand firm as they guard our goodly heritage, that the gifts of freedom and liberty, justice and peace may be transmitted from one generation to the next. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.